So the same way you could change uh, your setup for a mix hybrid or a video and voice. I'm using time lapse here, so you'll have to wait for me to reconfigure and, re and recapture. And in my Wireshark capture of this voice and video optimize, I just did it here. Uh, you see that suddenly the uh, AIFS and the uh, Silly Min and Max are different for video. And the same way, there is a, another specific setup for spectraling voice devices. Uh, first of all, when you are still in voice and video, we still have this um, QBSS value because that's the still WMM, right? So it's somewhere up there, right here. Um, so there is an, another setup which is for spectraling devices because spectraling devices have a little bit of a different setup. We used to be partners with them and they do not all of them support WMM, so there is a different setup for them. So when you capture with this, this setup, you see that the um, uh, WM section is still here, but the values are a bit different. It's a sort of hybrid between the WMM and, and default setup. And of course, the QBSS element is still here. Okay, let me go back to WMM. There's the last thing I would like to show you in this video. Oh, before we go there, this Enable Load Identity Mac, that is an interesting feature. What it does is that, you know, when you send a, a voice packet, it has a certain time to reach its destination. Typically in the wireless cell, you give this packet 30 milliseconds before reaching the, the handset. And we say, if the packet doesn't make it from the access point to the um, phone within the 30 millisecond period, most likely the phone buffer is gonna be empty and um, this packet won't be able to be played. So if you send this packet the first time and you collide for any reason and you try to resend a second time, you collide a second time, etc., you're delaying this packet too much. So what this feature does is that it tells the access point, you know, when you use voice, that is to say you have DSCP marking and RTP, so you know that this is a voice packet. There is a timestamp, by the way, in this packet. You're going to give this packet a certain number of chances. So you try to send it to the cell. If you fail, you may be sending it a second time, but if you fail a second time, you just drop this packet and try to send the next one. Because it's better to drop that packet and keep the buffer full, rather than trying desperately to send the same packet over and over again and having the phone in between getting its buffer emptied. So what it says, it's better to have a drop in the conversation, but still have the conversation rather than trying at any cost to send the same packet over and over again and finally having the phone not being able to play anything. So it says, you try a certain number of times, then you drop this packet, never mind, we'll send the next one. Um, that's something you use for most phones that have a static buffer. You don't use that feature with 7921s and 7925 phones, which are the Cisco wireless phones, because these guys have a dynamic buffer. So depending on the network conditions, that is to say the number of retries, the noise in the cell, etc., they are able to dynamically adapt their buffer. So when you use those phones, you tell the access points, you don't know if the phone buffer is going to be empty or not, because it has a clever mechanism to adapt to the changing conditions and the current conditions of the cell to increase or decrease its buffer size dynamically during the conversation. So don't take a chance and send this packet over. The phone knows if it has the possibility to play it. So it has a you know clever tool to decide if it can play or not. So you access point do not decide on these things and send the packet anyway. So you never check that box if you use 7921s or 7925s. If you use most other brands, most other phones which have a static buffer, you may want to check that box. That's going to improve the uh, communication quality in a crowded or, or polluted environment. Okay, so back to WMM and back to my society. And um, in the QS setup, there are two boxes that I get many questions about. I would like to show you what I do when you click them. So here, just those two here. 7920 APCAC and 7920 Client CAC. So 7920 is an old phone. It used to be B only. And that phone was not WMM. It was actually released before WMM. But at that time, Cisco was already working on WMM and 802.11e uh, with the IEEE. Uh, so they had a sort of a pre 11 e way of doing some QoS in the wireless cell. One thing is, you cannot check that box, clients, with WMM policy set to allowed or required. You cannot do that. Actually, if you check that, the access point complains. I'm, I'm going to show you why. Let me put this to disable and CAC to enable, and I'm clicking apply. And when you capture a frame with that setup, you see that there is still uh, down here a QBSS information element here, you see, but it's a uh, version one, non-CCA. And that's the pre 811 e setup that Cisco did. So the 17920 uses this QBSS information, but in a Cisco proprietary way somehow, to decide if it has enough space to get to the cell. 
But at the bottom, there is no WME section because there is no WMM support yet, and we do not click WMM support here in the QS, it's disabled. So there is a, a QBSS information, but that's a specific uh, QBSS version for the client. And as a matter of fact, if I uncheck that, click apply and sniff the cell again, you can see that this QBSS information disappeared completely. So we're back to the situation where there is no WMM support. So this QBSS for 17i20 client CAC is actually the client looking at the specific Cisco proprietary QBSS form of load for the access point and the client is going to decide if it can get to the uh, uh, cell or not. And the reason why you cannot use it with WMM is because, as you may remember, when you set it to WMM and you save the cell, um, the same QBSS information is seen. And if I capture again and I look back at my QBSS information, you'll see that the location of the QBSS information is the same, but the QBSS value is not the same. So you see, and here the version is 802.11e, so it's not version 1 non-CCA, it's 802.11e. So because this information is sent in the Cisco way for the client CAC or in the 802.11e way for WMM, you cannot use WMM with the Cisco 17920 client CAC just because they are using exactly the same section of the same frame to express two different things. One is for the client to decide if it has enough space, and the other one is just a normal WMM load information for the client as well to decide if it can join or not uh, based on these values. So that's why you cannot click those uh, two at the same time. But you can use the uh, 17920 AP CAC, in which case what you do doesn't have much impact on the um, cell itself because there the client is going to communicate its specific information uh, to the access point and the AP is going to decide if the client can join based on this fact. So when you have both WMM, which is the standard, and the 17920 APCAC, which is a Cisco specific information, when you capture a frame, you have not only QBSS, the 802.11e CCA standard version, and that's because WMM is enabled. You also have the WME section for exactly the same reason. Remember, we have that section. That's still because WMM is enabled. But you also have, at the end of the frame, a Cisco-specific, vendor-specific, AirNet QBSS information, which is an additional information exchange in a CCX way between the Cisco access point and the CCX clients, where the uh, access point is going to tell the client this is the number of stations, this is my utilization, and it's going to give also some specifics about if you have the right or not to join my cell based on what type of device you are. So that's Cisco specific. And of course, because this information is at the end of the frame, it's not at the same section, at the same position as the WMM information. So you can very well have WMM and 17920 APCAC in the same frame without any problem. But you cannot have 17920 clients and WMM in the same frame. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to look more in detail at this feature because it's going to impact how your traffic goes between the access point and the controller and back. There is a whole story here about uh, QS tagging on that section, which is a little bit complicated. So we have a specific video on that one.